Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hi, this is Alex, and this is The Ramble, a program that's guaranteed to work tonight. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is. Yeah, there's, there's uh, the lovely and attractive Lori Thompson, a woman I spent a good deal of my life with. You know. I know. I added it up one time, and I can't remember exactly how many, you know, hours and essentially months and years it added up to, but it was sizable. Yeah. No. And, yeah, because, uh, well, we were talking earlier about DeSantis and the Mississippi heat and the Florida heat and everything, but DeSantis, his campaign has never backed down, and his super PAC is already Oh, never yeah, we were down. talking about DeSantis last week. Okay, we were, uh, yeah. and I thought we would pick it up now too. Uh, the guy really isn't has he doesn't have much going for him. You know what happens? A guy like DeSantis is oh maybe he's popular in Florida. I don't even know if that's true. He's not anymore since the Disney blow up. The, you know the whole mishandling of that and okay. how much it brings into the state. You don't alienate Disney. That should say in caps and bold yeah. at the beginning of the gubernatorial handbook. Do not alienate Disney. Well, a, the gonna... old saying is you don't eat where you crap. You know, yeah. and, and, and basically <laughs> that's what he's doing here. No, but the thing is that he sits there in Florida and he's surrounded by all his cronies and everybody, you know, and he gets publicity anytime he says something, it's in the news and so on and so forth. And he thinks all America knows who Ron DeSantis is. And the fact Bro. is, you know, I mean, I don't even think Trump has to put him down because that only helps people get to know him. Okay. Right. You know, yeah. but the, it's, 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 I, a lot of times I used to say about uh, small leaders in the world like Idi Amin, who were, heads of a small country but they think they're a world leader because they, they're the head of that small country and they've got control the over fish. it. And it's the same thing with like, like some politicians. They think that just because I'm so popular here as the governor of Florida, everybody loves me here, at least he deludes himself into thinking that, that, mm -hmm. that all of a sudden the 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 whole thing that, that, that happens there is that he he gets this delusion that hey I can run for president because you know I'm getting all this press and mm -hmm. he's getting all press for all the wrong stuff too I might add. I know you know it's like what can I do now to alienate the election? now he goes out what? there he doesn't know how to campaign well on a national level and he's uh, you know he he's not he's not grabbing any traction I mean Trump has lost a couple of points he's He's down around in the 40s somewhere now. But DeSantis hasn't budged from like 22%. Yeah, he's just not, it's almost like a manual of what to do wrong, like shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's just making, and I think it's an indicator that his super PAC has lost faith in him. Or maybe they're just launching, what they're doing is pivoting to a different direction. He should have gone out after Trump lock, stock, and barrel. You yeah, know, I don't know what this great fear is that Republicans have about Donald Trump, but I think they're overestimating his popularity among Republicans. I mean... Well, I... You know, you go to one of those rallies, though, um, over the 4th, you know, thousands for Trump, and then uh, DeSantis was getting rained on in a parade in New Hampshire. Yeah. And uh, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. It didn't make, I don't know if the people on his super PAC don't have a lot of experience or traction. I'm not accusing them of that, but it something, someone at some uh, decision level is. I mean, I would have told him if he had asked me what he should do, I'd say, you go after Trump, lock, stock, and barrel, and not worry about the Republicans who might be irritated by the fact that you go after him. Because yeah. eventually they may be giving up on Trump, and you're the guy they're going to come to, you know. Yeah. And well, and a lot a lot of these Republicans are going to have to give up on Trump because, you know, uh, next comes about two more 
uh, indictments. And you've got a president that is so weighted down with indictments that he, do you want him to be president? You know, do you trust I, him? How do you compartmentalize what's going on in your life enough to be an effective see, president I, when you got that? You know, I don't think that we should equate Republican with the word stupid. But they, oh, no. they're getting to seem that way. Well, because I live with someone who leans that way. Because he was his entire career was in finance. And so he... Okay, I, you know, I understand why some people are Republicans. Okay. Yeah, he won't come out and say it, because I think he know that I would be curious. <laughs> but uh, he, I can tell just from the comments he made, if you want to really get him started, I mentioned Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> like poking a chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, because I, I keep thinking, when am I going to run into Ron DeSantis at the Piggly Wiggly when I'm buying baked beans, and he's going to ask Lori, "What would you do?" And it never happens. I don't think no, he comes to me. I don't think he'd ever ask you that question. I don't think you'd <laughs> have have a true answer, actually. Uh, but right, I'm, oh. You know, I mean, he thinks that he's going to get to the base by doing some of the things he's doing. The latest thing is he's gone out after gays. Now, come See, on. You know, come. I mean, that's just you want to talk about political suicide. Exactly. You know, it's like what what shoot, how can I shoot myself in the foot again till all my toes are gone? Yeah, why? Right, because Republicans don't like gays. Well, you know, a lot of their sons and daughters are. Exactly. You know, or and so maybe, don't don't think that Republicans are anti-gay. That's not a position for Republicans. Right. It's become so much of a lifestyle and an accepted one that I think it cuts across party lines. Well, I think they're getting. I think what's what's happening with uh, with the Republicans is they're getting confused by all the gender identifications. I know. <laughs> you know? Like, you know, I, I mean, I can't say that I don't feel the same way. I think you know, it just should be male female uh, and and uh, other you know or you know other. and then just you whatever you want to be do it you know right is it and then some people think it's denigrating to just have other like they don't have their own like well there was it, a, well screw you you know you you haven't been around as long as mr. and mrs. okay <laughs> okay that's it and it's and longevity man once but, you, get, you, you know, know in mean, a hundred yeah. years I just, I just think that, uh, you know, I identify, by the way, as cat. Okay. By the way, as cat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I identify as cat, and please don't don't stop me <laughs> from purring. Or here's something I do. You probably never knew I had this talent. No. Everybody thinks that cats, when they're mad, go, right? Right. Something like that. No, here's how they go. That's true. See, you know this because you're a cat. Because I, yeah. I, I am part cat. I, am, I identify as cat. <laughs> and what, I mean, I used to think I had a handle on trans. What is trans now? Does it mean you still have your part? Because I read Ellen Page's book. You know, she's now Elliot Page. Yeah. And uh, which I thought, oh, this will be interesting because she'll talk, she'll talk us through yeah. the mental process, the physical process. No mention of the physical process. Well, I don't think she ever physically became a man. I don't think the, so. The, but it, it's hard. Talking. It's also harder for a woman to become a man. Although there is an operation, it's called an adedictomy. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but you know, I would say by the book, you get no, no insight. And that's what I thought. Oh, finally, someone was going to explain to me. See, when I was at, when I was at, when I was growing up, okay, and that was years ago, folks. Nobody was gay back then. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. sure. I, my friend, my parents, two best friends were gay. They used to come to the house all the time. And they were a gay couple, you know, but they never said anything about it. You know, you didn't do that. Right. But uh, so I've always been gay, positive, you know, because oh never, yeah, I've had nothing but positive gay. Uh, influences, but anyway, and also I wanted to be an actor at one time, and everybody in the theater was gay, and yeah, yeah I know. It, you it know. was a way of integrating. Yeah, so I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't never, that, that never ever even begin to bother me. But what what bothers me is is that there 
are so many people trying to get a foot in the door you know like well i'm sorry what about trans okay what about trans okay what about uh, this what about that and then we have all these uh, pronouns and everything like that and what you're doing by doing that is you're alienating the very people who maybe even were on your side in the first place right you know? and well I, I i think that within trans there must be like so oh, well, many subjects. Well, what i was going to say is when i was a kid there was no such thing as trans it, they were called cross dressers yeah which people yeah. who had a regular life i mean like a normal uh, acclimated, you know, that, that that were of their sex in mm -hmm. their professional life would come home and relax. Well, in fact, you know? in San Francisco, we had a nightclub called Finocchio's, and Finocchio's had nothing but, you know, men dressed as women. Uh, yeah, and and, that, and it was a very big nightclub. People loved to go to it. It was they loved the, the I, you know the show, and they thought it was terrific. And hey, that's really a, a guy. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but, but there was just, there wasn't even trans, it was just cross dressers. That was it. You know? Right. And that, because I, and drag has been a big British theater tradition for a long time. Oh, long yeah. Time. Well, I mean, when you go back to Shakespeare, yeah. Uh, none of the people who acted in Shakespearean plays at the Globe Theater were female. All the female parts <laughs> were played by males. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I didn't know that, but yeah. I know that that's yeah. a long-standing element of British theater. Yeah, I mean, uh, and and uh, it, it just they they all dressed in drag and did the female parts mm -hmm. uh, because I guess he didn't want to work with women or something like that. Or he didn't consider them you actors. Mean the bard the was ba the bard had his problems. I think you know. I think everybody in the public eye does but they've just been sanctified for public consumption but you know i mean uh so i i just never knew from from trans or anything like that it was just cross dressers mm -hmm. uh, and then the, then the, then the big story when i was a kid was a big news story christine jorgensen do you remember this name i remember reading about her was she the first sex change she Not went to it. sweden i think or someplace like that and and had her penis removed and, and came back as a woman and uh, she became a, quite a celebrity as a matter of fact you know she was on yeah, all the tv shows and things like that so that was the first time i think that america ever heard of that kind of thing i also think it was the first time that medically it could be done yeah i'm sure it's come a long long way long yeah. long way but most and most people who are trans don't really want to change their parts their gen gender parts yeah you know. it would be after living them with that long you get sentimentally attached well chastity bono uh, yeah. has never uh had a penis put on added uh, yeah added uh <laughs> and uh, well i didn't want to use the added dictomy joke again no know? no it's kind of like uh, lego uh <laughs> yeah but but it, uh and when asked why he hadn't uh he basically said because I just don't want to do that. I just, you know, that it's not that it's too much of a commitment. It's just not part of what I want to do. I'm happy living the life I'm living. Yeah. You know, and that's all that matters is that you you're happy with the life you're living. But there are people who will say to some of people, well, if you want to be a female, then why don't you have cut your penis off? And you know, you come know, on. I don't look at other people's lives and say, here's how I do it. You know, I that's the most ridiculous hobby that you, one can have the no, most I, uh, we, we had a woman on my show in San Francisco I'm trying to remember her name now who was a uh, tr uh, trans okay and mm -hmm. and went and actually I think had the operation and had the, the penis the removed pill. yeah the full full uh, vaginal <laughs> fold or whatever and, and I said to her I said uh well, why do you did you go through all of this? And she said, because I've determined I'm not as much um, uh, uh, trans as I am a lesbian, and I want to be full oh. lesbian. I said, and then oh. you have sex with women, right? And he said, she said, right. And then I said, so why did you go to all the trouble? Right. <laughs> you, know? you were getting what you wanted. Why did you go to all the trouble? And and she said, well, I just had to. I felt I felt compelled to. 
So yeah, well, you know what? Follow that inner voice, I think, unless it tells you to kill a bunch of people at the post office. Not good. But, you know, if you feel like if there's a yearning of, yeah. you know, that deep longing in your life, then go for it. Well, I mean, the, you, the other thing is, is that women who, um, or people who uh, are trans aren't necessarily gay. That's a right. big mistake people make. They think, oh, you're gay, therefore you want to wear a dress. No, you're a male who wants to wear a dress. Mm-hmm. Now think about yeah. that one for a while, okay? Well, you know, and and I always used to like to brag, and I bragged over and over again to the point where people were probably tired of hearing this story, that I knew every single uh, trans in mm-hmm. Lou Reed's Walk on the Wild side. Right. I knew and Hollywood to- Lawn... Uh, you know, Candy Darling, Candy Darling. and uh, yeah. uh, what's his name? Uh, the other one. Okay. My mind, so. As soon as I'm forced, I can't remember the name. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Jackie Curtis. Uh, I knew all of them. Uh, and they, and, and uh, two out of the three were completely straight. So straight that they were getting, really? la- they were getting laid left and right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Holly Woodlawn was just, uh, he, he never had sex with guys. Always women. You and know. one of them, you said, looked like just like oh, a woman. Oh, Candy other. Darling, <laughs> Candy Darling was so female that when she would walk into a room, I would kiss her on the cheek. Uh-huh. Or maybe I may have done it on the lips. I don't know. But she deserved it because she pulled it off so beautifully and carried uh-huh. herself with such respect that you wanted to honor her, you know. Yes, and when she respect. was And when she was dying in the hospital of cancer... Uh, she wanted me to come to her bedside and videotape her on her deathbed. And I turned it down. I said, I can't do it. I just can't that do it. That was heart-wrenching, I would yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would have been yeah. heart-wrenching. And I, I thought the world of her. You know, but I mean, yeah. but the, 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 you know, the, the concept that all trans have got to be gay is, is ridiculous. It's wrong. Oh, yeah, I've known that for a while. I just think within trans, are there... I would like to be, first of all, accepted that people do what they want to do. Yeah. You know, I don't judge. Judgment's such a waste of time. Well, if you're alive, I want people. I want. I want for everybody else what I want for me, what I want for you, what I want for my wife, and that is that you live your life as you feel good living it. You know, right? Joyously. Joyously. With joy. And that nobody should should uh, tell you you have to live this way or you have to be that way. You know. Yeah, everyone just, I mean, that free to be you and me that Marlo Thomas championed in the 70s still pertains. Yes. You know, just, uh, yes. Just, and, and, and don't assume that people have a problem with it either. I mean, just be who you are and don't get your dander up because you feel yeah, like you, yeah. you're going to be met, but, met with resistance. But anyway, so when I see somebody like Ron DeSantis going after gays, I just, don't. you know, I just... You know, not only is he alienating me, and not only is he alienating gays, but he's probably also alienating a lot of parents who are Republicans, who are MAGA Republicans, who have children who are gay. You know? I mean, uh, let's face it, folks. There's not one person watching this right now who doesn't know somebody who's gay. Oh, yeah. You know, that's impossible that you don't. Yeah. You know who's been very accepting of it? I've kind of been proud of them. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, which yes, I watch religiously, and uh, Jeopardy, which I also watch, and uh, they they have gay people or trans. In people other words, have. what you're telling us right now is you have no life whatsoever. Oh no, uh, it's yeah, just yeah. that I clear everything <laughs> with a block of Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune. That's my that's my cozy place, mm-hmm. my happy place. But uh, Pat Sajak, once he goes, I'm sorry. A part of the wheel just you, you dies. You remember when he did our show in San Francisco? Uh, he, he and Vanna. And Vanna. Like seven in the morning, and Vanna comes in, and she's like 23, 24 at the time, so she had yeah. that going for her. And she, like, maybe a hint of eyeliner and lipstick, and that was it. She's she gorgeous. Just looked, yeah, gorgeous. Gorgeous and angelic at the same time, which is not an easy feat. It's and I, I liked him a lot because I thought he was very funny. Oh, and very dry, very self-deprecating. Fair, he's just everything that I love. Yeah, that's he makes it fun to watch that show 
just getting hit as getting well you know you, you, you know i often said that if anybody were to take over the tonight show it should be him because he, remi yes, he, he, he remind me a lot of jack parr uh -huh. and, i didn't know jack parr yeah, yeah. and i he then got a late night show on cbs do you remember that I remember of it. I don't know if I ever saw I think, it. I think he still kept Wheel of Fortune because they do like a whole season's worth in six weeks, you know. Yeah. So it didn't exactly. matter. Uh, it's a great and, gig. And he, uh, but he went over to CBS and did a nighttime show, and he was a little. He played it too safe. He if he yeah. had just played it the way he was on my show, he could have beat Carson. You know? Oh yeah, I, I thought I thought because like I say, I watch the Pat Sajak's asides, and to beat the people like I'm screaming homemade peach cobbler at the Wheel of Fortune screen. It's so obviously homemade peach cobbler. I was proud of myself because I watch YouTube a lot, right? And so uh -huh. YouTube is running a lot of these uh, episodes of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where somebody was trying to answer the million dollar question. And you and get I, it? And I like that because I then try to see if I can come up with the answer. Well, there was one episode of, if people don't remember this, of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, in which the prize had escalated because they had done some kind of escalation thing to uh -huh. 2 million 100 thousand. Okay. Nice chunk of change. And they had the 2 million 100 thousand dollar question, and I got it like that. Boom. And the question and was, the question was, and they had a choice of four people, uh, who was the first person to produce the first uh, commercially produced helicopter? You'd probably go, I would go with one of the big ones like Lockheed or Boeing. No, no, it's an individual. An individual? Yeah. Uh, Wilbur Wright? Sikorsky. Oh really? Yes, his name is. And how did you know that? I knew it. I just knew it. Uh huh. You know, they also had another question for a million dollars, and I can't believe this one. How far from the sun is the Earth? See, I don't know that. And they I had like uh, they had nine point three million miles and something something else, and I, I immediately knew it because I've known it for, ever since I was studying astronomy. It's ninety three million. Whoa! Now, see, I would think it was right down the street. I would have won, won one million for saying ninety-three million. So, not it's, bad. It's a, yeah, see, that's what frustrates me. Yeah. When you know, I play Wheel of Fortune and word games enough that I mean, the answer becomes pretty obvious pretty early on. Yeah. And uh, and and I hate it. We're I'm going at you know I'm pounding the counter at home and going, can't you see? Can't you see what it is? And it's so well, they say it's easier for you to answer those questions at home, but these questions I wouldn't own the answer to just like that. Yeah, and yeah. see, I think Jeopardy fact, would be a little intimidating. In fact, I was amazed at how easy the million dollar questions were there were a couple of others that i got right too how easy they were in comparison to say the five hundred thousand dollar question yeah it just it matters your niche of understanding and reading throughout your life and, but and you, what you, you remember the, i don't know if you remember the time on who who wants to be a millionaire where they had a comedian on who was got up to five hundred thousand uh, dollars no Got up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars and was now going for five hundred thousand dollars. So he was on the. Yeah, yeah and the, the question back. was, who directed, uh, uh, who who directed the uh, Michael Jackson uh, video of? Uh, oh, I can't. Thriller. No, not thriller. thriller. No, no, not thriller. No. The, the, the one after that. Um, um, but anyway, uh, the guy doesn't know. But so he, so he, 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 he says, call my friend. I want to call a friend, phone a friend. Who's that? Okay. Will Durst in San Francisco. Oh, wow. Yeah. Will. So he calls Will. And Will, uh, he says to Will, who directed uh, the bad, uh, bad, what was it? Uh, bad. 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 Yeah, the bad song. video. <laughs> Got it right. <laughs> I was thinking it was bad something. Uh, the bad video. And they had a list like Coppola, uh, Scorsese, um, uh, the guy who did uh, who did Thriller, and somebody else. And immediately, Durst, without thinking twice, names the guy who did the Thriller. 
Uh-huh. And I'm going. Yeah, because that doesn't surprise me about Don't do that. And the guy would... says, okay, that's the answer. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Landis. John Landis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, okay. He says, yeah. Uh, John Landis. And so uh, his friend goes, okay, uh, I'll go with that. John, John Landis, final answer. You're wrong. It was Martin Scorsese. Really? Yes, I, I knew the answer to that. I said, this guy should have called me, you know? <laughs> I'm in the book in San Francisco. And, and so, uh, Will is well known for that, that he gave somebody the wrong information and the guy went back down to $32,000. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. And he probably, he probably has remorse for that to this day. Uh, yeah, well, it, so. uh, you know, it's not something you want to live with. Hey, listen, you know what? This thing goes by awfully fast, and I can tell because when the sun gets to be too much, I can still see oh, your face, yeah. but now your your thing is your blouse is like got a lot of sun on it. Rude, yeah. Well, um, I will. I can. I'm trying to find a neutral spot that doesn't have a background of like you know a single light bulb. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that would be hey, bad. Hey, people <laughs> love you doing this with me, and I love doing it with you. And let's keep doing it, okay? Let's keep doing it. Okay. I have so much fun. Stay where it's you are. I want to talk to you when we're through here. But ladies and gentlemen, that's her nibs. I don't know where that ever came from. Her nibs, Lori Thompson. Thanks, Lori. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay. Okay. There's a gal. Okay. That's uh, Lori Thompson. The gal. The gal. Anyway, hello everybody. How are you? Good evening. Um, we have a show to do here tonight, and hopefully we will be able to do the show. Um, <laughs> because it's... Um, last night we had a real problem. Let me bring my people in here first before I do that. And uh, I'll uh, just bring them in. And uh, we... Uh, we uh, uh, this will be kind of interesting. Uh, let me see here. Uh, admit, okay, admit. Okay. Here we go. Alan. What? Okay. And uh, hello, everybody. How are you? Hey. Yeah, we can hear you now. Much we, better day. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you today. But where's where's Brian Neary? He was there. Oh, he's there. He's there. But we don't have him. We don't have a picture on him. Or anything like that. Are you there, Brian? Oh, there he is. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so uh, last night we didn't really have a show. Uh, we couldn't figure out to save our lives what the problem was. We weren't getting any sound from the panel. And um, here's what happens. Um, Zoom. And companies like Zoom, I won't just blame Zoom for this because I can blame Skype for it and a lot of other companies, um, went ahead and, um, uh, 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 what did you say, Jeff? Software is <laughs> what it got you. Update, no, yeah. No, update. well, they, they updated. Yeah. And when they update, they don't say, you know, if we update, are we going to screw people over? I mean, no, are we going to take sure. something that, we, that they set and then reset it i mean are we going to be able to do and uh, what they do is they they don't do it uh they they don't uh re, they they just turn everything off so that you have to turn stuff back on well when i had a problem like i had last night it's like looking for a needle in a haystack yeah uh, because there are so many little things you got to flip on and off there's my control board over here there's the stuff that's on my screen there's the stuff with Zoom, and I couldn't figure it out to save my life. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing I should have known is that everything was kind of off because uh, I have these backgrounds here, like this background you see here, and they're all here that I can bring them up, uh, uh, bring them up. And what happens is it's terrible, is that. Uh, uh, it, it all my all my uh, uh, pictures, all my backgrounds disappeared. Like this one wasn't on there any longer. So when they upgraded, they just they didn't care if they were going to screw people over or anything like that. They just did it. Well, 
there was one thing that they didn't uh, that they they uh, again did not do and that was the um, there's a um, um, a thing that says hey speakers in other words what comes out of this machine here and that goes into the board well it was set automatically it turned it around and had it set to USB as opposed to earphones mm -hmm. it was that simple after the show I figured it out it just boom that was it but it, it was like looking for a needle in a haystack all last night uh, and uh, we just couldn't figure out what was doing it and it's it's people like zoom who suddenly decide, oh, you know, we're going to do an update here. Oh, who, who cares if it's going to reset everything that somebody has on their Zoom? I shouldn't have to change anything. It should just up, update, you know? And uh, so I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. But anyway. The, the, best, the best part of last night is when you would just yell, okay, Alan, I know. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Or, Bill, yeah, I know. Stop talking. Yeah. It was hysterical. All of a sudden, you just burst you know, out. <clears throat> I, said, I know, I know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I got to, uh, I got to thank Kevin, and I got to thank Phil, because they came back after the show and helped me uh, mm -hmm. be sure that it worked. Mm -hmm. I, I all of a sudden I went, "That's it. It's got to be it." And then I called, I uh, called uh, Kevin and said, "Can you call me?" And I called Phil and asked him, "Can you call me?" And they did, and we all, between the three of us, uh, uh, got the thing working. So I mm -hmm. want to thank them for it. Uh, and uh, but man, I was so exhausted after that last night. I was just, I was just wacky. You know? <laughs> I was paying Phil back because every time I'm on the show and he's listening, he sends me a message. I didn't expect him to tell you verbatim what I was saying to him. So I was just, it, it, he texts me all the time when he knows I'm on the show. Oh, you know this, or you want to answer it this way, or anything. And I don't, and I don't respond. So I was kind of paying him back. Yeah. So anyhow, I just didn't realize that he was going to say, oh, by the way, Alan says. <laughs> that was hysterical. And then when, when Charlie I thought called it was in, funny. when Charlie called in, I, I said a quick prayer. I never prayed, but I prayed that, that Charlie's work and it was Phil. <laughs> Well, you know what also is amazing here? I've got, uh, I, oops, hold on a second, folks. That probably just screwed things up a little bit. I can't figure out how to get the old line up here like we used to have it, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, there yeah. we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. I just did it. I just did it. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're okay. Now we're fine. It just took me a little while to figure it out, see? I mean, it... Uh, uh, but anyway, so I apologize for last night, folks, but it was really driving me nuts. And uh, but yeah, now, highest ratings too. I went to I went to the side chat, and you were like at a hundred people or something like that. I think so. Somebody he uh, 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 Phil said it was like a hundred and ten or something. Yeah, somewhere around there. Well, I, you, whoa, so you people love to see me fail, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, and where do I get 100 people from, 120 people from? People calling other people and saying, you got to listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's going nuts. Yeah, this, guy is, this guy's got a real problem. And then tonight I suddenly noticed my camera, which I haven't been able, which has been dying on me every now and then and freezing up, isn't doing that anymore. But now my face is more orange than it ever was. Mm. Looks natural. You know. I look healthy, don't I? Yeah. You do. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Fine. So yeah, it was, that was that. Was, so that was last night. And thank you, folks, for you know putting up with me. It's it's not fun. But uh, uh, Kevin, thank you so much. I thank mm -hmm. Phil if he were here. Uh, but uh, you you two guys really helped me. And and uh, Charlie was here for most of it too. But. Um, well, he wasn't giving any real advice. I didn't know anything. No, because he doesn't doesn't know anything. Remember that. Uh, uh, Sometimes that's a big benefit. Yeah. 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 I didn't. I didn't know. I was just saying, it's working. It's not working. You have a picture to fill, and I I wasn't giving him ideas. He was the ideas came out of Phil. 
to how to fix it. I I just said unplug everything and plug it back in. That's as yeah. far as I can. Well, that, yeah. that that's one answer, and that's what we did do. You know, reboot. Uh, yeah, reboot. And when when in doubt, reboot. But that wasn't the nature of what was wrong. The nature of what was wrong is fucking goddamn Zoom. I hate it when they reset the defaults. <laughs> well, you you've had that happen probably with Skype. You've yeah. had that probably happen with Zoom, where all your defaults get changed, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it shouldn't. It should. It should just update the program. <laughs> now everything's yeah. working fine. You know. Uh, but, it's Microsoft's favorite way of doing their monthly updates, screwing yeah. stuff up. Well, here comes here comes Phil. Uh, oh, probably. Oh. Well, no, don't go. No, he didn't get his shot last night. Brian. <laughs> so right. what? He doesn't. This. Not that he has to have a shot at me. Yeah. Anyway. I, I have a I, one of my defaults got set rearranged on my 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 printer at work and it starts printing two pages you know on, on oh each yeah, side yeah 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 side. and that drove me crazy for a week uh yeah well you, you can change that but yeah but um, undoubtedly, it, but undoubtedly they did something like update the uh, the uh, software for the printer and uh it just defaulted back to, to both sides you know and it shouldn't do that you know, the trouble is these people, these companies, these, these, these programmers are so full of themselves that they go, look what we can do. And they don't ask anybody who actually uses the program whether it is easy for them to use. You know, so they, 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 they don't go and look for changes um, in, uh, in, in, you know, that, you know, it's going to change my entire preferences in my in my Zoom, I want my preferences to stay exactly like they are. But anyway, that, that whole thing last night, as I said, was like looking for a needle in a haystack. You have to find it, but it's and it's somewhere, but you don't know where exactly. So, you know, but uh, uh, it, was, it actually it was for the most part it was Phil, uh, Kevin, and uh, and uh, Charlie and I uh, trying to solve this problem. <laughs> And everybody, everybody listening to it and telling their friends, you want to hear somebody really going in the, into the toilet? Uh, just uh, tune in here. You'll have a good time. Yeah, you got up to 112. Yeah, we're okay. up to 38 now, folks. So the, you'll, yeah. You'll, <laughs> yeah. Uh, my manager wants to know if I'm still getting paid for last night's appearance. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Double time. <laughs> Okay. Speaking of getting paid, uh, I don't know if I should continue doing this show after midnight tonight. Why is that? Yeah, we'll be turning to be a pumpkin. Strike. Well, because my, be my, union, my union's going on strike. Right. Yeah, I, I'm surprised that you're uh, you're crossing the picket line and working. Uh, you know, when the rest of your brothers are on are, are going on strike. You didn't even know they were going on strike. Yeah, well, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're also complaining about AI. Uh, uh, you know, uh, well, they, the, all they're saying with it, their only demand about AI is that if you're going to do AI on a performer, that you yeah. have to have his consent to do it. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and uh, uh, the, you know, in a case like, for instance, like they just did uh, Indiana Jones, a new Indiana Jones movie, and they wanted to de-age Harrison Ford, and they had to go digital to do that. Right, they, they just want you to be able to say yes, I agree with this. This is okay by me, you know. Mm. Uh, don't they get paid for that too? I'm <laughs> sure they had to pay him to do that. Yeah. Well, um, well, he he was being paid to do the whole movie, you know. Yeah. And that was oh, part but, of the process. Uh, uh, some people they're using AI content uh, that was created by others and uh or the content that was created by others and the ai is using that to uh create whatever it's creating and those creators want to be compensated yeah no, but su sure, suppose somebody sure, uh, somebody does it, it wait a minute suppose somebody does it who doesn't belong to who is not a signatory to the union are they responsible uh, do they have I, to live I don't know by how that? that works no, because they didn't they weren't signatories to the uh to the after contract but uh, you know, I have certain ambivalence towards uh, SAG-AFTRA, okay? Uh, and my ambivalence is there's going to be a strike that starts at midnight tonight, and I suppose I can't do any movies 
mm. or television dramas. But well, if I'm if I if I'm a newsman on TV or I'm a disc jockey, mm. th this strike doesn't even concern me. You know, and it's because they don't give a crap about people who work in radio. They don't give a crap about people who work at local TV stations. Uh, and I, that bothers me. And I'm supposed to sit around and go, oh, hey, AI, that's a big problem. Not for me, it's not a big problem. Big problem is, is that they, you know, they do one set of programming for 10 stations out of one location and, and there was never the union jumping in there and saying, uh-uh, you can't do that, you know? They never, they never help people like me, you know? So I, am I supposed to care about this strike with them? Well, I understand what you're saying and, and, and it has to do with the union, but what about a creative? For instance, let's say one of my photos, which I don't really care if people use or don't use, even though I have copyright. And nobody cares to use them or not use them. So. Yeah. So well, one, let's say they use one of my photos, and I'm not a member of your union, but if that photo uh, is part of an AI creation, uh, you know, should I be compensated or should I be given the ability to release it, uh, and uh, you know, regardless of whether I'm a member of the union or not? And I think that's what. You well, know, say that talking. say that again. You didn't make a lot of sense okay. to me. Uh, I'm a creative. Yeah. Uh, I take photos. Yeah. And if AI uh, a, a program t grabs my photo from the internet and uses it, uh, you know, my photos are copyrighted. It, don't I have the right to say whether they can use it or not? And uh, I think that's a part of what well, they're Well, of course you about. should have so, the right to say whether they use it or not, but you I don't get what you're saying about AI using your photograph. Well, you, you know, it scours the uh, the internet yeah. for, for uh, data, and if my photo uh, or someone else's creative content is, 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 is utilized mm -hmm. in the creation of an AI uh, a program or uh, or end product uh, that's you know stealing my creative uh, content. So if you post it on Facebook, and I'll bet you somewhere in those big long contracts when you sign yeah. up for Facebook, it says that you put it on the air, you get somebody gets to take it. I'll bet you. I have a website, and and so does Ray. You know. Yeah. Uh, so but I, is, you know, it, they, is are you a do you have like a corporation for your for for your copyright or how's that well, work? he's also he's uh, I'm, also I'm, assuming that the people that are going to be stealing his photographs are people who are legitimate okay and uh really give a good goddamn about whether he gets paid for well it that's or not. you know that's the yeah. risk you take a foot well, no that's line. that's the risk of the internet i mean the yeah, what exactly. is the internet what is youtube but lots of stolen material okay wow wow west yeah, yeah Ray's okay, Ray. Okay, Ray, and oh. then then Brian. I, I I just got in on it, but I I feel I wanted to let you know and others that Adobe is uh all of the you know how Photoshop will stick pictures of things, you know, like you want a homeless guy sleeping on the street in Central Park, they'll stick it in there and it looks real. Mm -hmm. um, it all comes from their stock photos. Adobe, so mm -hmm. they're not using anything out there on the internet uh, that they didn't pay for, but they have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of stock photos in there yeah but where did they get those people they've paid people have been paid right yeah so they've yeah. been they've been compensated yeah i don't know yeah. this don't, is adobe i'm not saying other other yeah stuff. yeah adobe's now, doing it that i way. never bothered selling anything to getty or registering with getty or any of those other services because yeah you know, right you know, they, got just water, that, they got watermarks on everything that they put out I'm yeah, just saying, I, Ad Adobe for one is doing yeah. it the right way. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. I don't know about anybody else. Same with Getty. Yeah. Yeah, but there's there's a lot of stuff uh, that you hear about all the time. People will grab a picture mm -hmm. for their own uh, website or something, and and not get the permission from the photographer or offer to to pay something. I do it all the time. Uh, I I yeah, shot some photos. Everybody does was... it all the time. Oh, I'm telling you, Phil, welcome to the new world of the wild, wild west, okay? Well, so if you I, want to protect it, you I, put a hey, watermark listen, on it so it looks like shit. Up. Brian's had his hand yeah. up for a while. Brian? People have done paintings of my cars and sold them. People have yep. done pictures of my cars and sold them. I've seen other stuff on the internet, my car on other stuff. 
and, and, and they make money off of my car. But I I, I shot Danny Glover uh, for an event, and uh, the they used they wanted to use his fo the photos I took in a book, and the the guy actually called me, wrote me, sent uh, said he'll send me a copy of the book, which he did, and he paid me. I, I told him I didn't want any money for it, but he, he sent me a check oh. for one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, he was to, honest. Yeah. To use the photos. He was honest. Crying, I thought you were crying about people taking your pictures and using. Who's Danny them. Glover? Danny yeah, Glover. He was honest. Danny. There's a lot of honest people out there, and there's yeah. you know, yeah. like what Danny uh, Glover has an, an apartment Brian in my was, apartment house. Actually, yeah. What Brian was saying was that they do that with uh, cartoons. You know, they make you know uh, cartoons out of your car. And there's a guys out there that do that all the time, and they steal cars. Yeah, don't stop you. That. There's a lot well, of. Those. I mean, people look, listen. I go online, and um, I see uh, if I put in Alex Bennett, I'm going to see a lot of stuff there that I never gave anybody the right to use. Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, come I've on. I got a naked picture of you on my wall in here. <laughs> anyway, I wouldn't admit to that. <laughs> yeah, that's out. TMI. <laughs> I See, here's, here's here's one right here. That's my 1940 LaSalle, mm -hmm. and the paint was so good it looked like a mirror at this car show. The guy took a picture of it, so you see the reflection there. And it's on the cover of yeah. a book, All Customs. Yeah. Wow. I didn't get paid for it. But now, what theme? I, what I, theme? I put a little bit more money in my car than in your photos. What television <clears throat> theme song? Reference the LaSalle. All in the family. Yes, yeah. All in the yes. family. Yeah. Oh, gee, our old LaSalle yeah. ran great. And another picture of my car. Mm. Same thing. In the book, all these people's cars, but nobody gets paid for it. But well, can you, it's a matter you know, of somebody's you honest or not. You so the other thing I was going to ask about earlier is, so with like these dead people holograms, like Michael Jackson holograms, I'm yeah. sure that their estates ask for money as well. Right? Well, the estates can sue. About it. The, the estates can sue, and those they're people, money. those people, I mean, have, they're in movies. Well, uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the there's an agency that represents yeah. dead people. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and if if this kind of comes up and somebody tries to do an AI uh, hologram of <laughs> uh, Elvis Presley, the Presley estate can sue. Yeah, you know, they have uh, same kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, Charlie Chaplin, uh, his estate had the rights to his to his um, character, image. to yeah. his image and his character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, so like, do you remember years ago when they had a thing called the IBM Junior? You remember that? Yeah. And, and all the ads were using Charlie Chaplin. Oh yes, they did. Guy came out like, yeah, with his little thing. Yeah. Guy playing Charlie, playing Charlie I think Chaplin. It too. They had to pay for that. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. So, you know, I mean, but uh, I, I just, uh, you know, I'm getting back to my union, I mean, my union doesn't really represent the radio side of it, the after side of it the, aggressively. And they're, they're the ones going on strike tonight, not me, you know. Uh, and uh, I would walk in that picket line if I felt they were also fighting for the rights of, of, uh, of me to, of people in radio, for instance, to be... Uh, covered the way they're trying to get their actors covered for the misuse of stuff. I mean, when people, when they went to um, voice tracking in radio, uh, and I remember this distinctly, uh, Laurie Thompson was working at a station I then went to work for. And they, when they voice track, what that is, they simply do the parts in between the records, you know? And this is Larry Thompson, and it's a happy Monday to you, and here's the Beatles, or whatever. And then, somehow, they have a whole thing, and it just matches the audio to the, to, the, uh, to the music. And she goes in, takes her an hour and a half to do uh, a whole four-hour show, <laughs> let's say, or an eight-hour show. I think it was an eight-hour show. And it took her like, uh, it took her, uh, 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 you know, an hour and a half, two hours. They paid her for two hours. 
but she's covering something like eight hours of radio time on that station. Where in the old days, they would have brought her in, she would have done the disc jockeying, she would have spent eight hours at the radio station or six hours at the radio station and gotten paid for all of those six hours. Yep. Well, I don't see this union doing anything <laughs> about that. You know? Yeah. And, and I'll give you another example. I mean, and I worked uh, two jobs. One of them recently, I don't know if the station was union or not, but I worked for um, um, WOR, which is owned by iHeartRadio, and I did two different shifts for them. Mm -hmm. And they're a union station, and I never got a check. Did you tell the union? No, mm -hmm. no. I just, I, it, 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 I, it, the check would have been so small that it was worth it to me not to get paid in order to be able to tell you this story now and complain about it. Well, you know? <laughs> but it's a perfect example of why should I be supporting my union when this union has done done precious little to defend us, you know, and defend the broadcasting business. You know, when, when I helped you out at Camel for that uh, part of the summer, Mm -hmm. uh, I, they, I got paid, and it was a small amount of money, minimum wage, and you said, do you really want it? And I said, yeah, because this is the only time I, I'd ever gotten paid in the radio business. And uh, and that yeah. marked my spot as a professional. <laughs> you know? Well, so, all, I think what I was intimating was you don't need it that much, do you? You know? No, I didn't. Yeah, you but know, but, uh, but I, I certainly think that if you work, you should get paid for it. I mean, mm -hmm. I worked four hours over at, at, uh, at uh, uh, iHeartRadio. WOR here in New York. Did you York. get paid by the conservative? I should, I should have gotten paid for four <laughs> hours. And by the, the way, we don't voice track talk shows. That when yeah. we do four hours, we do four hours. Well, the Sinclair gig that you did, did and you it, get paid I, I by never, the conservatives? I never did anything was for Sinclair. Yes, you did. You no. did a you did that show uh, where you filled in for uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, uh, years ago right wing right wing guy. Uh, you remember it was just a month or two or three. No, that ago. was that wasn't Sinclair. That was ABC. That was a Sinclair it? station. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was the conservative Salem guy. Broadcast. Oh, Salem, Salem. I'm uh, Salem Sinclair. They all look alike. But uh, did, did uh, Salem pay you? <laughs> no. No. So no. you got screwed by WOR and the Republicans. And by the way, when I got screwed the first time at WOR, I was working out of the same control same studio <laughs> that's well, the funny part about it <laughs> when are you going to learn your lesson <laughs> and the second time i was over to, at the other wor facility but i uh, know i didn't I, you know i kept wondering where's my where's my you know they don't send you i had worked for wor <laughs> earlier doing a lot of shifts over there replacing uh, certain people and uh every time i did it they would call me up and say where do we send the check Oh, you know, yeah. did you get paid for the Walter uh, Sterling Sabo fill-in? No, no. So, yeah. so that that's just as profitable. as I you haven't have. been paid for any radio I've done since I left Sirius XM. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Because and but that's because the business feels they can get away with it. You know, they can feel they feel that oh well, you know, so what? This is, you know. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, it's not so. I mean, uh, I want to get paid just like anybody else. You, you know? have to send them an invoice? Nobody told me I had to send them an invoice. Okay. Nobody asked me just, for my address I'm, for crying out loud. They just asked me if I'd show up and do the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I'm used to doing, uh, uh, you know, doing, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 charity work. Charity work for, for work. somebody like iHeartRadio. You know. But all I'm saying is that, uh, and and I, I don't know how Ray feels about this. I, w I would like to feel in lock lockstep with my union, and of course I, you know, I agree with the demands that they have, and I'm I hope they get it. But still, what's that goddamn union doing for me? They took away my health care, you know, and they don't represent the radio business. They don't, they don't care. I mean, we lost a lot of stations in this country that once were union stations that aren't any longer because they didn't step in and do anything about it. 
you know? So I'm supposed to feel sorry for, you know, a bunch of out of work stunt people? You know, come on. Yeah. You know, and no, I, I have, wait a minute. I have such Tone, a Tony, Tony. Well, well oh, Ray, sorry. let me listen to Ray first, Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say, Alex, I, I completely am with you. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I declared financial core with SAG. Um, SAG has done nothing to maintain <laughs> any work in the San Francisco Bay Area mm -hmm. for actors. They don't care. Um, they don't do anything. They care about uh, Hollywood. They care about New York, and, and that's they all used, they care about. They used to care about here, but they don't. And there's just no work. So I went. I and and they hate it when you, when you did what I did. They give you a nasty letter. They say they might not ever let you back in, and all this. Stuff. What do you mean? Because you, why? Because you complain. I, I, there's a, there's something called financial core where you're allowed to be a, be in the union, but not really in the union. Um, so you can work union and that's non called being job. Fran Drescher. Anyway, go ahead. Yes, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and also, Actors Equity, the stage union, it's the same thing. They're they're not doing anything to help us now after COVID. Um, and there's hard and there's hardly any work anymore. I my uh, mother my mother used to work for AGVA, which is the American Guild of Variety Artists. Now, these yeah. were all the guys who used to do vaudeville and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And I, I was talking to her boss one day, and he, she says, yeah, it's a great job, but how, how would you like to be part of a union where the president of the union is an out-of-work magician? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are they even around anymore? I'm not even sure. Agma? I don't know. I really and don't know. I'm I don't thinking th about leaving the, the state union, too, because, because I just don't work. Well, I mean, you know, uh, who else had their hand up? Somebody had their hand up. I, oh, did. Oh, oh, I know it was, uh, it was Tony and then Jeff. Okay. Okay. Here's a question. Now, this may be totally uh, like to, to Ray. Maybe you can answer this, Alex. Say, Ray, you took a job, say, overseas or, say, out of the country. Is that looked at as out of the uh, out of the union? They don't have they have no jurisdiction over that. But, so you could work you could work in Canada and be at it. Like, do you have to be in a union in Canada if you took a job? They they have unions up there. They're even weaker, and that's one of the reasons that Hollywood does a lot of their shooting in Canada now because mm -hmm. they can pay people a lot less. TV money. shows, a lot of TV shows are done in Canada. And and a lot of and then it's become uh, Vancouver's become the substitute for San Francisco. So if they want to shoot something that looks like the Bay Area, they often shoot it in Vancouver. Okay, because it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah, but okay, uh, uh, Jeff, do you have something to say? Yeah. yeah. So my. My son is very involved in, with classical music. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is you want to be a guy who's going to perform mm -hmm. this classical music. He has to pay for it because the va this company that he works for owns those, I'll call them patents, but they're music. And the fact is that when it's classical music and it has to be performed by a big company, they're really gonna make sure that they that they pay for it to use it. Mm -hmm. And so he often goes around and talks to the guy who's uh, running the music and stuff and saying, hey, I think about next quarter you're gonna play something new. Why don't you use this thing? It's really right up your alley, and you'll enjoy it, and you'll perform it well. And if the guy likes it, he'll buy it. Of course, at that point, uh, Andrew's company gets gets paid for it. Mm -hmm. Interesting, but it's non-union. Well, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. That's an entirely different situation, but I, uh, you know, I understand it. But I mean, I just, I, I you know, I, you're SAG after, aren't you, uh, Ray? I, I, Ray, talk to me, Ray. Yeah, I'm SAG yeah. after. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, your mic wasn't on. Um, yeah. So you're SAG after. How do you feel about this strike? Do you feel it really concerns you? No. No. No, because I. I like I said, there's there's hardly any work up here anymore, and um, the union has the union made a huge mistake years ago when they let uh, the non-network television stations do whatever they want. 
and that's in pr- well, forever. Well, I mean, uh, that's they, in threats forever, and yeah. it's completely screwed up, and that'll never be fixed. And what's happening now is uh, non-union <laughs> uh, productions finally got smart and are paying more. So a lot of actors just aren't joining the union because even though they won't get residuals, at least they get a decent a decent paycheck for the day yeah. if they were. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it it's terrible what's happened, and the way the union has kind of let its uh, people down in broadcasting, especially because oh, yeah. this used to be a town in which there wasn't a single station that wasn't union. Right. And now right. there's a lot of non-union stations here. New York or San Francisco? New York. New York. I can't yeah, say okay. about San Francisco, but I imagine it's true in San Francisco. It is. It's the same. It's you know. Same. I mean, and I worked at a station that was non-union, which was uh, uh, Live 105. Of course, it was legally non-union because what I say legally non-union is they went in there at one point, they asked the people who worked there, did they want to start a union? They voted the union down, okay? Mm -hmm. So therefore, if you worked at that station, you weren't strike-breaking or going and working a scab station. Mm -hmm. If it had been a union station that wasn't following union rules and they were going on strike against it, then you would be scabbing. Uh, So I was never scabbing. But, you know, I, uh, I, at one point, I'll tell you this story. I, uh, I decided that I wanted to be a signatory to the union. So we mm-hmm. signed an agreement with the union to be a signatory, that anybody that would work for my company, including myself, <coughs> would be paid union wages, okay? Whatever the going union rate was. Uh, and uh, so I, the, my company paid me a, a salary, and that salary, uh, you know, paid dues to the union and so on and so forth. And this went on for about a year. And then when, when I finally wanted to use the medical plan at the union, they said, oh, well, you're just, you're doing this as a sham. And I said, why have you been taking my money all this time, you know? They, they didn't want to pay benefits and stuff. That's right. That's yeah. right. In spite of the fact that I made my company a union signatory, and so therefore I was a member of the union, always have been, even when I haven't done union work, which is most of the time, okay? But I've been a staunch union guy, and I belong to the union for, God, I think it's like 40, 50 years. I'm a long time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I just found it amazing to me uh, that, uh, that this union just screwed me out of it. They didn't even give me my money back, right. you know? Uh, and so I, didn't, I had to just, when I went and bought my own ins- health insurance, but they, they, they screw people like this constantly, you know, so. Well, and they, they have made it uh, both like the uh, Actors' Equity, the stage union, and SAG-AFTRA have, have decreased the uh, health insurance uh, so much over the years, incrementally. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so hard now to get health insurance. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it used to be... Yeah, well, they screwed, years, us I, over. they screwed us over a few, about a year back, two years back, where they just said, we're not going to... We're not. I was had a deal where I was paying two thousand dollars a year and I got this a great deal of uh, insurance for that you know and it was a good it was a good plan it was a good supplemental plan to my Medicare and all of a sudden they did away with it they just said that's it goodbye see you later you know oh here we're sending you over to this company who can help you find insurance you know and it was just it was horrible what they did just horrible and they've become so politicized too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They just go with you know everything progressive, hundred percent, like no questions asked. Yeah. I, and, I don't know how many people are interested in what we're saying, but I'll tell you something right now, that in a, a uh, uh, few months, you're not going to see any new TV shows this year. Yeah, they're not. They're all striking out the actors. Yeah. You're going to you're going nice. to slowly not see new movies being released to movie mm-hmm. theaters. I mean, uh, your whole entertainment uh, dollar is going to go for naught now. Well, football's coming up, so who cares? Yeah, sh- oh, hell with you. <laughs> yeah, but baseball, I want to see a big run. 
Giants are doing good. Warriors well, are you know, yeah, I tell you, part, part, of oh, the, good. A part of this is that the movie companies also can't do promotion. Let me explain this. What happened? They have a picture call, coming out called Oppenheimer that opened up. I can't wait to see it that, opened yeah. tonight in, in England. Yeah. And uh, they all walked out of the premiere. All the stars walked out of the premiere saying, well, we can't be here because the strike is starting and we don't want to cross the picket line by doing oh. something for the movie company. That's, That's interesting. Right. My my daughter does promotion for Paramount Plus and I should call her and ask her if uh, if, if they're being affected by I, that. I of course they're that. being affected by it, Phil. Why wouldn't they be? So, well, you know, yeah. I, I, was, I was looking forward to go to see the Barbie movie in IMAX, damn it. My niece is going to oh, have, have it come over. I have an illegal version. Don't worry. Oh, good. I, I don't think. Tomorrow. I'll I don't think my. Tomorrow. I don't think my daughter is in the union though. Even she did work for well, the. She wouldn't be in the. Why would she be in the union? No, I don't think she is. I'm sure she isn't. Why would she be in the union? Yeah, well, because she works for Paramount Plus. But, no, but that, 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 that doesn't. You know. You know. That's she it's works black. for Paramount Plus. She's a. She's a person who works in the office doing a job. That's a pencil pushing job. Has nothing to do with acting. Has nothing to do with that performing. No, she does a promotion. You know, well, red no, carpet. Well, then she, she, she of course wouldn't be a member of the union. Yeah. Oh, did you hear what he just said? Red carpet. <laughs> yeah, she does. You know, all the. I know. I'm making it because she sells carpet. Well, she won't be able to find anybody to walk the red carpet <laughs> uh, tomorrow. She cleans. Yeah. She cleans the carpets. Phil taught her how to do it. <laughs> She's actually a pretty smart gal. And, I know. I'm uh, kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah, she wouldn't be in the union unless she has, does any oh, she's acting. Not on, she's not on screen. It's all promotion. Yeah, then there's no events. Union. You know, she does the events and and promotion. Yeah, unless they had another not, union. That's like not a performing teams job. This is team says everybody's going to work or break your legs. <laughs> <laughs> but those, you know, but those the teamsters and those unions are real. The teamsters unions. got their stuff. got the job done. They yeah. do yeah. stuff they for their. Like it or not, probably. They oh, do what they're supposed to do as a union. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the first union I ever belonged to was the IBEW, the, elect, uh, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. How'd you get wow. on that? That's because, local three. Because, right because they handled small radio stations. Really? The because, licensing, right? Well, well no, but it, no, it was because most of them were what we called Engineer. combo operations, and you ran your own board. Right. And so they had the the uh, the say so over anybody who did anything with the electronics. Oh, uh, wow. In <laughs> fact, uh, quite a few of the engineers at stations here in New York, I think some of the shops were IBEW. As a matter of fact, who ran your own board Incredible. at Camel? What? Oh, did you? Who yes, ran the board? But that, that was a non-union station. Yeah. Uh, Didn't matter. You know. <laughs> but uh, you know. It, <laughs> the greatest story I ever had about unions. So I worked at WIND in Chicago, and uh, I go to work there, and they say to mm -hmm. me, "Okay, here's the control. Room. Here's the uh, studio," because they mm -hmm. had a studio, and we had an engineer, okay. and then I had a studio I was in, and then to the right of me was a guy with two turntables. What the hell is he doing? Well, let me finish the story. Oh, yeah. You're just going to be in curiosity. Yeah. So, with two turntables, and um, he also had two a music stand there with the playlist that we were using on there so he could cool. cue up the next record. And I would say, blah, 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 blah. And then I would cue the musician, we called him, the musician who would play the records. And then the engineer would cut my, then I would ask the engineer to cut my mic. And sometimes I'd get my hands all screwed up and everybody was doing everything at once. Um, but what happened was the reason that came to be was that the James C. Petrillo, who was the god of the Musicians Union for years, um, went to the radio stations in Chicago at one point and said, you know, anybody who plays music on these radio stations has to be a member of the Musicians Union. So and, he had him there. and he used it as an excuse to get all his girlfriend's jobs. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. But every, so every, most stations had a musician 
who you, played you, the music, you know. Well. And and I had this guy, one guy who was a musician, he was also a trumpet player, he'd bring his trumpet to work with him and practice while the records were on. Put him on the game, is he good? <laughs> Uh, he's fine, you know. That'd be different, Tony. What can you play today? Yeah, but I mean that was a that was a real. But the thing was with Petrillo, man, he ran a he ran a hard shop. You know, you nothing moved without Petrillo's uh, union. Uh, and Those getting yeah. with the union. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, enough of me complaining about my union. Well, Alex, uh, although I did say that my mother, my mother's boss, told me, "How do you like belong? How would you like to belong to a union?" In which the president of the of the union is a is an out of work ma magician, and my answer to that is uh, the present day of that is, how would you like to belong to a union where the president of the union used to be the star of the nanny? Who was that? Was that? Fred, Fred Drescher. Drescher. Yeah. From Queens. Yeah, I liked the nanny. Me and my mother used to watch that. She was good in it. It was Lucy. Like she you know. can she can go to hell. You don't like? I, you remember to like that show? I don't like her because she took away my insurance, asshole. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, she wasn't the brightest, I guess. I, she had the wrong person head in the union then. But she was good on the show with the other guy from my soap Who box. cares? That's <laughs> true. Alex, isn't isn't the president of SAG usually a star <laughs> like that? But they don't. They're kind of just like a figurehead. They don't really make the, those kinds. No, of they they do. They they. It's always mm -hmm. somebody you've heard of because I thought it was Ed Asner, Alex, at the time. Ed the Asner it. was the president of of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of SAG. So, okay, at SAG, one yeah. time, yeah. He's also the guy that just before his death sued the union over this insurance, this uh, health insurance. Oh. And we got a settlement. He was good. Then. Uh, I I think I'm going to get something like you know five hundred dollars or something. I don't know. It doesn't really pay for all my health insurance. Yeah, you know. Cover it. So. Speaking of health insurance, by the way, I I, I don't have uh, I don't have lung cancer. So. Oh, my he had a nodule. My mother had the same thing. I didn't want to tell you that, but everything was fine when she was alive. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've had the I've had this nodule for eight years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, when you said it, it's very rare that it would be cancer. They told well, me that, what too. got me mad was that the doctor had me go have this CT scan in the first too, yeah. place because there was nothing there that you know. And it all came back. All the stuff that was could have been wrong was just the same as it was the last <clears> time. <throat> yeah. So, you know, but. Uh, Hey, uh, you, you know why they dropped the uh, cocaine investigation at the White House? No, they didn't drop it. It's just they couldn't figure out who did it. Uh, somebody <laughs> snorted the evidence. <laughs> Bill, who did it? Well, I watched that story tonight on the news, and I had to start laughing. Okay. How did it get there? Was it planted? You think because, I mean, it's such a hilarious story. I mean, it's a little, you know, it's a little baggy of, of coke. Little baggy of coke. Donald Trump Jr. Jr. It, it was at the entrance and where people would take their cell phones and all their things and put them in cubbies. And so somebody put it there and didn't take it out of there because they feared being yeah, served. But I mean, but the, they made oh. everybody. Then, then your Republicans. Uh, what's his name? The, the head of the the. the yeah, he went nuts. Congress. Uh, what's his name? That jerk. Uh, Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy. He says. Well, there should be a full investigation of this. It's horrible when this kind of stuff shows up at the White. Are you kidding me? It was his <laughs> coke. It was probably his <laughs> coke. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, you no, know, he makes a big deal out of it. I'm I thought it was Joe Biden's. <clears throat> Joe, Joe, I, I thought I yeah, thought it was Donald crazy. Trump Jr.'s. Well, huh. they should have. I guess if you go over to Fox, they're blaming it on Hunter Biden. Oh, it's okay. Hunter all the way. Oh, for sure. For sure, it doesn't it go in that to entrance. <laughs> I had to be Hunter. I don't to. think I don't think the first family uses that entrance. That's, that's, that's entrance. what she, well, that's what she it said. Secretly, he yeah. used it so that he'd <laughs> oh, bring okay. it in. Oh, Jimmy Moore, somebody dropped their little baggie. Yeah, Happens but, all the but, time. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, I mean, I just what I can't believe is that Kevin McCarthy was making such. He just had to make political hay out of it. He, he can't, is a he, real loser. He is. Why not? <laughs> Even Phil know. doesn't like him. You know, that's a kind of lax White House we have under Biden that people can leave their coke behind. What? Exactly. Lazy people. And all this hot weather that Biden's been causing, it's just terrible. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. You, you know, want to make Phil like Alex? You want to make Phil quiver? You ready for this? What? what? Bidenomics. <laughs> Remember Reaganomics? Bidenomics. <laughs> Uh, is it hot in Texas right now? By the Charlie? way, how come I haven't heard yeah. you mention that Biden is responsible for this economic research we're having? Fox is doing good, Phil. You can't first, say yeah, first. First, he took it into the into the dumper, and now because it's crawling out of the garbage no, he can, inherited, bit, he inherited it being yeah. in the dumper from <laughs> Trump, and then has turned it around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What he did was he killed the economy to turn it around. So, you know, he, he shot, he, what he do you threw mean? the baby it, out it, with the bathwater. Inflation what you has do taken is, a turn. As you, you cripple the economy by raising the interest rates the way uh, it's, uh, it's obviously, been obvi I don't know how it works. Okay. I'm not a, a, a money guy. I don't understand how that works, where you raise the interest rates and it helps the economy. But well, apparently, it inflation. But, but it, apparently, Phil, it has. It slows inflation when you it's raise working. interest rates. It's working, Phil. Well, mm. it's killing the economy. What do you mean it's killing the economy? The stock market itself? You know, it's quiet at my wait, store, wait, wait and there's a lot of stores I, I that are closed. I, I don't, well, that's because you're go, you're a particular way of doing business is probably going out of style. <laughs> right. Uh, it's impossible to, to do it any other way with what I do. The, the product oh, is too really? big. Oh, really? Oh, really? Really? Yeah. yeah. I get, uh, you can't you can't install carpet over the internet. Well, well you, with AI. you can order it over the internet. Yeah, yeah and then what you are you going to do? You get a three hundred pound roll that's twelve feet long and two, and two feet in diameter. You can figure out how to do it by yourself. I'm sure I can go. I'm sure I can go on the internet right now and buy a wall to wall rug for this ap apartment. Okay. Uh, and and uh, have them do it to specifications. You would, you would and have then... to contract with a contractor no. that could receive it, bring it over, send mm -hmm. a crew to install it. Mm -hmm. no, That's you right. Go Home Depot, they're all over the place. You go to, you yeah. go to Amazon. Home Depot you is might no different than I am. Time. Oh, I'm saying in the parking lot. Oh, oh, well, yeah, but uh, Home Depot's business. That's where you get them, right? Is, is similar to my business model. That's where he gets his, his sales department. You your they all have Latin names. Hey, yeah. uh, they, they want too much money. <laughs> oh, no, they're $10 an hour. Come on. No, not, you know, they're 20 now. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I haven't done it for a while. Where do you think I get my installers? Oh, see? You got, you're bad. You're on the payroll, you told me. Uh, I got on great another note. On another note, Matt Gates they isn't getting away with that. bicycle seat sniffing anymore, is he? Yeah, well, Biden's not sniffing any hair either that we can see. Uh, yes, uh, they're, yes. They're bringing that case up again. He ain't getting away with it. Bicycle speaking, speaking of Matt Gates, yes, Alan. He wants to defund the FBI. I love how the Republicans are pro law enforcement. <laughs> well, I thought they were against defunding the police. They are. Oh, right. They oh, don't consider the FBI the police lately. They don't consider the FBI the police. Oh, they have their own agenda. Webinar. Because well, what's the, the, the guy who's the head of the FBI? But the Republicans have always had their own agenda. The guy agenda. who's the head of the FBI. time you admitted it. The Alex is trying to say something. The guy who's the head of the FBI spoke in front of the committee that was, you know, all those jerks, you know, up there. <laughs> it's a very and, low IQ. Yeah, and, and finally he said, look, you know, he said, uh, you want to get rid of the FBI, then you, you get rid of this and you get rid of that and you get rid of this and you, get, you have that. And then he said, do you know what you get in return? You get this, you get that. You know, <laughs> that the FBI is there to, to stop stuff from happening and to, to prosecute stuff when it, when it does happen. And that it's there and it's, it's always been working and it's been important. Uh, and uh, to stop using it is going to bring a larger level of crime in this country than you've ever seen before. If you guys want to have your That's way. That's what they want. Now, J. Edgar Hoover started the FBI. Now, didn't J. Edgar Hoover uh, kind of misuse his power? Uh, and you were a victim of that. You, your file he misused, is He misused his power for a very important reason that you failed to mention. He felt he had a job for life. Okay, yeah. and he had mm -hmm. that job for something like I think forty years, some amazing amount of time. When you let time. anybody have an office that long, they become corrupted in it. Well, you know, don't you have a file? Uh, only took Trump six yes. months. I have one, but that Alex was that file. was not initiated by Hoover. That was initiated by Nixon. your boy Nixon. 
Nixon, yeah. I still find that fascinating that what those people he had files on. Yeah, well. Did I you ever get so the freedom? Did you ever get the Freedom of Information Act and ask to see your file? No, I haven't. I really haven't. I I just That's never right took the to time. Bill Myers. I never I never took the time. You know, <laughs> I know, I, I know people who have seen it. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and the reason I was on a list of ten thousand people to be audited by the IRS, you don't want that. courtesy of Nixon, uh, because I was known to hang out with leftists. You know, and I was <clears throat> and I was a radio broadcaster, and they wanted to shut me up. But they never got around to it, so, mm. you know, I'm still here today. Instead, know. they screwed up Bill's carpet business. Hmm? Really? Mm. He can't, he can't, he's, he's going out of business. He's got a sale, you know? Yeah. He's even selling cars now, uh, the business is so bad. Model, uh, model oh, I thought you were going to sell your business, Phil. I got some guy that's interested in it, but, you know, if I sell it, what am I going to do? I've heard that he's going to sell it about five times since I've known him. You know, I, I was talking to somebody about it today. I said, you know, if this guy does buy it, uh, you know, maybe I'll go to Maui. He's dying to go to Maui. Hey, Phil, what's the name of your company? I don't even know. Carpet One comes just before Carpet Two in it's the book. Called, it's, called, <laughs> it's called Rug Munchers. <laughs> Carpet One's a big franchise. They have a good it's a, it's a co-op. Yeah. Uh, so they have a good reputation. Yeah. yeah. Well, Phil's blown that one for them, hasn't he? <laughs> Not really. This guy cuts it all wrong. <laughs> it's all kind of guy. That's <laughs> all. It's, it's all right. It's all crap. Alex, on a question with the strike, do you think they're going to settle that anytime soon? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I thought the writer's strike was going to be settled a month ago, and it doesn't look What's like it was. What's the main stoppage in the thing? What they're, are they thing is something like they're going to wait till October to start negotiation because they want these guys to be desperate for money. Well, you know, I mean, if they don't have the talent to turn out the movies, there are no movies coming out. There are no movies coming out. They're sitting there paying. Oh, they're going to have to fire a lot of people. They're going to have to hey. fire a lot of people. Uh, th this one's good for Alex. I, I, on Drudge, they say there's going to be a senior citizen uh, dating show. Uh, you citizen? Know, what's it called? Go uh, Golden Bachelor. And, uh, you know, like, like The Bachelor. Yeah, ABC. So it's a, senior, it's a dating for senior citizens. <laughs> okay. He's not married. a bachelor. Why is that good for He's Alex? Married. He's married. Yeah. Oh, would Alex. that be good for him? Never stopped him in the past. Yeah. Why is that good for me? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why that's good for me. Well, it's, it's better it's for you, true. Phil. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway. Oh, well, maybe you could be on it. I mean, a lot of guys have launched their careers, their television and uh, movie careers, by going on like the dating game <laughs> and, and a number of those shows. Ray, have you ever done uh, you know one of those talk uh, you know TV shows, uh, dating game, or any of those things to? Can they make up those crazy questions? Well, I was a little yeah. young for the dating game, but right. uh, yeah, no, I have not. Like we asked well, question. I did the... audition for. Um... Man, one of those really, really stupid dating shows they have. Like, really? Yeah, really bad. Yeah, bad. It passed for Let's Make a Deal a lot. It, was there any dating show that wasn't stupid? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, was it the dating show, Brian, to catch a predator? <laughs> that rings a bell. <laughs> that, was a that was my favorite. When I was dating this girl. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, she was 13, but she said she was 14. <laughs> you love making lemonade. I'll tell you that. <laughs> really? Really? Oh, man. Well, I know that. I was like watching uh, I, I that show back. That show was hella funny. <laughs> I, I know you can't hear it. It was like, it was like but watching a car accident. Yeah. I, I know you can't hear it, but the theme is playing. Oh. oh. God, that whole show worked tonight. No technical problems, not a hitch. The it was audio, like, got on. The yeah, like audio, the well, they, that, yeah, that is a hitch. <laughs> but I think I have to say, hand it to Brian for sticking around in spite of the fact that you came on. Sure. Yeah. Oh, Who? yeah. Who? Oh, Who? Me. thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. 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 I said it wasn't a full hour of Phil, so I was It was happy. a sacrifice yeah. he made. Yeah. 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 What anyway. happened last night? What was that oh, all about? Oh, quickly, quickly. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I broke the show. Okay, Charlie, Charlie, what does your t-shirt say? 
Oh, it says I ate some pie and it was delicious. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's Charlie Wallace, the only certified rocket scientist among us here. Uh, thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks also to Brian for being with us tonight, Brian. Love, love having you here. I think here. it was Prime Day, not Pie Day. Can you <laughs> shut up for a minute while I close the show off? <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe I can break it. Alan, thank you. Thank you, Jeff Stein. Kevin, always a pleasure to have you here, and thank you for last night. Thank you for last night to Phil Meyer. Not so much for tonight, but for last night. Uh, also, thanks to Ray. Thanks to Tony. If everybody will give a big... Uh, wave goodbye i'll give a big wave goodbye at you there they go ladies and gentlemen that's our yeah that's our our uh, uh citizen panel for tonight hey it all went smoothly no problems and uh, we'll be back again uh tomorrow uh same time same station in life in the meantime as always if you see her tell her i love her and jack bishop is next with the intersection <laughs>